All right, let's get right to it because it took me way too long to get to the story. Jackie Singh of Hacking But Legal did a lecture at some kind of tech convention security thing, and uh, I wanted to hear what she had to say. Now, I'm going to warn you, she's going to take us through a visualization exercise as an introduction. It's a long one. And for those of you who have seen it, I, I will put a timestamp in the description and I will be doing minimal commentary, uh, editing out some chunks uh, just to power through it. For those of you who are just bored watching this dull woman at a podium, I'll put a little window with me playing the flash game flight in the corner of the screen. And this should this should just work out and for the past six months. And I'd like to thank the board at OWASP for inviting me to tell you about it, for trusting me to tell you about it. So you can leave the session today with a little bit of updated knowledge about a set of, of uh, emerging threats of which we should all be aware. And now if you'll indulge me this early and so soon after you've had your morning uh, beverage, I'd like to open with a, with a visualization exercise. No need to close your eyes for this one. I would like for you to try and imagine for a moment that you're a regular Joe named Patrick. As a moderately successful science fiction author, you live a seemingly ordinary American life in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and you tend to enjoy the, th the simple things in life, right? You work on your deck on the weekends, you ride your bike on the open roads, and you spend evenings at your favorite local bar, uh, maybe engaging in discussions on politics or local sports teams. Oh, shit. I, I think I know this story. Let me guess. This, this guy also likes to post liberal propaganda on Twitter, call people he disagrees with child. He likes fighting with people online and claiming he can beat them into submission in a self-defense confrontation because he's a trained knife fighter. And he does this several hundred times a day. You know, an ordinary average guy. And uh, you're divorced. You've since remarried a really lovely woman with kind eyes named Nikki. And you share your home with a sweet white cat and the coolest bearded dragon. And you bought a duplex so you can live in one half and rent out the other side so you can help make ends meet. And I think so far I've described a life that many of us can relate to um, or even aspire to, right? It's comfortable. It's middle class. It's unremarkable. It's normal, right? Apple pie and baseball. Now, I want to introduce a real life scenario that has transformed this conventional life into a perpetual nightmare. Imagine being stalked for five years by people you don't know and never did anything to. It starts online, but quickly escalates. You receive thousands of abusive text messages. Social media platforms that you once used to freely share your ideas and keep in touch with family and friends now harbor hundreds of accounts created solely to disparage you. Tweeting anything now invites replies from tens of anonymous accounts accusing you of the most heinous crimes you can imagine. Um, grooming, pedophilia, of being a failed father. How dare they? Pat is not a failed father. Uh, that's slanderous. Freaking trolls. He gave up his rights to his child before she was born after a violent threat to his pregnant wife. He may be failed, but is not, nor was he ever, a father. Overweight, a worthless husband, right? Um, any projection they can think uh, to aim at you. And there's an obscure web forum with a few thousand users that happens to contain over 400,000 posts dissecting every aspect of your existence, from your professional accomplishments, or as the forum would claim lack thereof, to the most intimate details of your personal life. And all of these fabricated lies being pumped out about you have started to make the people around you, frankly, suspicious. You notice a lot of your friends have just stopped reaching out, and others have told you outright that they know that these attacks are false, but they simply cannot risk maintaining a relationship with you, an active relationship where they're seen with you out in public, um, right? For fear of being similarly targeted. They're, they're frightened. And it doesn't stop there. Someone scrawled a threat with a permanent marker on your motorcycle, which was parked at your house. 
Someone covertly took video of you walking into your home, which was later used to create a new Google Maps entry listing your home as a public business, complete with harassing and racist one-star reviews. Um, a large load of wood chips was ordered and parked behind your car, blocking you in. Someone tried to open dozens of financial accounts in your name. And the books that you write to try and make a living are mobbed with uh, more racist one-star reviews as soon as they're published. Your daughter, who's a minor, is targeted. Your author website is DDoSed. And your personal information, both real and fake, is published in many awful places, many of which you aren't even aware of. Yeah, so here I'm just going to skip forward because she's just listing the things I've covered over the last five years. Some accurately, some not. And let's skip forward a bit with Jackie describing the trial of the century and the subsequent fallout. Now imagine that you choose to do what many would recommend, which is to go the expensive route through the legal system because law enforcement just won't help. So you sue to try to obtain the identities of these harassers from the tech companies that help them stay online, but fail in court given various complexities, including Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act, which meant you needed to prove that the administrator of the site was actually part of the harassment cult targeting you. You even tried to sue Cloudflare. Uh, it didn't work. You were trying to obtain the identities of your harassers. It didn't work. So now that your lawyers have failed to stop this harassment in court, you're now forced to pay your anonymous harassers legal bills in the, to the tune of tens of thousands of dollars. Even after they created a website with multiple domain names to economically terrorize you by claiming the admin of the forum would take your house if you refused to pay the judgment. Right, because the judgment was so big that you know it, it would be it would be your home as collateral. So they they willed this website, which is hosted on AWS, by the way, um, among others, like a joke meme to threaten and mock you, and you can't really stop it. Right, you feel like if you move to another place or you change your phone number, data brokers will just sell your data to your attackers. You register <laughs> new utilities, you connect your phone bill. And now that information is out amongst the data broker community and they're passing it around. The people who inexplicably hate you um, text you many times per day, sometimes hundreds of messages. And you look up the phone carriers online for each one of these phone numbers and you complain to them. But the tech companies keep ignoring your reports um, or saying that they're actually the only the wholesale vendors of these phone numbers that are being used to send you the death threats and that they can't do anything to stop anyone from messaging your phone number. Meanwhile, the attackers just change their number repeatedly to make sure that you get their messages. One message per number, so you can't block them, right? Blocking is not helpful. So your phone can actually only stop unknown numbers from reaching you if they're truly unknown, not simply missing from your contact book but identifiable to the device. So several of the forum members um, uh, actually physically showed up to your court hearing regarding enforcement of this judgment with seemingly little fear of arrest or repercussion, some from the main forum and some from another site called Kiwi Farms, which is a more prolific hate forum. This is actually far from the first time the strangers have traveled across state lines to try to come and find you and make you feel afraid. And you now have to stand in a court of law while one of the most prolific aggressors against you who traveled a thousand miles away from his home to harass you in person gives his name to the court recorder as required so he can stay and watch the proceedings. The video of you walking down the courtroom hallway and the documents obtained in person from the court file that day would be posted later that day for hundreds of laughs. In fact, a small number of YouTubers and podcasters who call themselves documentarians frequently attempt to make money and square reputation points off of this perverse spectacle, which is your life as a stalking victim, sensationalizing your daily torment into an ongoing drama series for their personal gain, often with um, you know, thousands or hundreds of thousands of followers. So Jackie either does not know or is pretending she has never heard of Chris Chan or Cyrax or Ethan Ralph, which as a cybersecurity expert, she may want to look into, you know, seeing as Pat is just one in a long series of narcissistic idiots who are so addicted to the occasional updutes on the internet that they will intentionally subject themselves to hours of horror and misery a day to get a drop of sympathy and attention. And these documentarians produce extensive conspiracy theories about you, such as claiming that you're lying about the attacks for attention, 
and then uh, they disseminate these conspiracies uh, freely to people who aren't in on the joke at all and begin to suspect you as a completely awful person in the absence of other information. And so as masters of gaslighting and projection, one of the most pervasive lies these awful people tell others about you is that you're somehow performing these swatting attacks which you feel could get you killed at any moment on yourself and that you purchase these attacks from a, from a vendor on Telegram. And some of them even use their real names and faces while doing all of this stuff. They say you deserve these attacks for being a public figure. You don't even know what that means, right? You're not a famous author. You're just a regular guy. Ha! Buried him! You're not a famous author, Pat. I told you. I told you. Even your own bulldog knows it. You have 50,000 followers on Twitter, so maybe that makes other people feel like you're a big guy, but you feel like a regular guy. You live in a regular house. You're, you know, you're, you're, you're a regular person. So you, tr <clears throat> excuse me. So you try and obtain orders of protection or restraining orders against uh, one of these stalkers, right? And he's a short, middle-aged, somehow gainfully employed uh, man living in the Boston area who's one of the most visible stalkers targeting you. And I say, you know, uh, short and middle age because he isn't um, someone who is physically imposing is the point, right? Um, but he travels and he's persistent and he's nasty and he says uh, scary things and you want to protect your wife, right? So you submit the request for the restraining order, it's rejected, you try again, rejected again. The first time you didn't have enough evidence, the second time you shouldn't have attached it, Perversely, there seems to be nothing uh, that you can do at all, despite the fact that this unstable individual has posted threats of violence against you using his real name, regularly contacts you in any available medium despite your constant attempts to stop it, and has traveled to your home multiple times. Like, the police won't arrest him and the FBI doesn't care. So everything I've just described to you is actually only a subset of attacks that have come your way. And here's the kicker, right? All of this irrational hate targets you an average person, a regular person who has done absolutely nothing to warrant such obsession and malice. I mean, you don't even fit the average profile of a person who's cyberstalked, do you? Tweets 18 hours a day, claims to be a genius while clearly suffering from a learning disability, inserts himself in a political discourse uninvited, fat, attention-seeking cry bully. Yeah, he checks a lot of the boxes, Jackie, I don't know if you know Pat as well as you think you do. As cybersecurity experts, we're trained to analyze threats as data points, vulnerabilities to patch and risks to mitigate. But today we're here to examine a far less abstract threat that is so intricately woven into our digital world in a way that it's, it, you know, it's not a dystopian novel. It's not a thought experiment or some type of fictional scenario. It's a real relentless onslaught that's being experienced by a real person, an average citizen with very little recourse. Now I want you to consider the implications for security, both personal and systemic, if such a barrage of hatred were directed at you, a security expert. Jackie's argument here rests on the absolute falsehood that Patrick S. Tomlinson is a completely innocent, unremarkable, passive victim, and that the trolls are working themselves into a frenzy over nothing. When, in reality, over five years I've documented every time Patrick has had the opportunity to stop the escalation and instead chose to further escalate. When the trolls made jokes about him, he got their accounts banned. When they left negative reviews on his books, he illegally DMCA'd their subreddit. When they opened a website dedicated to him, he started trying to dox and sue them. Uh, this kept going until he was ready to testify before Congress and lost tens of thousands of dollars in an unrelated lawsuit against the admin of the forum. The Patrick S. Tomlinson Jackie describes is an absolute fiction. I mean, the guy has sent over 200,000 tweets, most of them hostile. But she's not here to talk about Pat. She is here to talk about her amazing accomplishments, like the time that she embarrassingly decided to sign up to the forum herself under the name Piggy Tomlinson. You know, referencing the fact that Pat is a pig, I guess. Oh, oh, here we go. Let me go back here. 
So I decided to go into that obscure forum where these individuals were organizing and to run some recon about what was actually going on in there, right? And after spending some time looking through the forum and gathering information about its participants, I came to the realization that this truly was a harassment cult, just as the victim had described it. And it had all the key features of a distinct internet culture with its own uh, history, characters, language, in-jokes, memes focused on their targets, right? Social networks and distribution channels for content. And in fact, this harassment cult that had been uh, tormenting Patrick and gaining steam for several years um, had this forum as its uh, key social network, a self-hosted forum running on Zenforo uh, software. And what I found inside there was absolutely disgusting. It's a cesspool of awful deranged personas, right? Hate speech in every thread, racism of every stripe, anti-Semitism, anti-woman, anti-queer, anti-trans, anti-human. Literally anything awful you can think of has been represented there in explicit detail. And I will not disturb you with graphic visuals of their content. But as examples, they had a long thread of popular celebrity Lucy Lawless with swastikas photoshopped on her body. They um, had a Jew hate thread that they regularly bumped to the top of the forum, which runs hundreds of pages. Um, I've seen them work AI transformations to turn photos of their targets into racist caricatures. And of course, 400,000 posts about their celebrity crush, Patrick Tomlinson. Despite these users being Nazis and all but name, my main problem with this place wasn't even the speech, right? It was that dangerous offline activity that we just saw, right, that had been fomented by this group of individuals had led me as an investigator towards that forum. The reason she's not offended by the language that they used is because she herself was a member of a very similar community, the Gay N Association of America. Yes, it's hard to take issue with what she claims is hate speech when you yourself were a proud member of the infamous We've Let Hacker Collective Gay N Association of America. So I decided to take the fight directly to the trolls. You see, I had uh, learned a really useful technique by observing some of my friends who were heavily targeted for their political work over the years. And this technique I found useful involves poking a threat until something interesting comes out. Essentially fuzzing uh, another human being who appears to be acting in a malicious manner. And so I posted to the forum and decided to directly threaten them with doxing or removing their anonymity. And as expected, this produced an immediate flurry of activity and useful data. One troll immediately doxed me and posted tons of my PII and that of other people with similar names to mine. A photograph of me in a partial state of undress that my girlfriend took when we were both 14 years old was hacked off of a Linux box I used to learn how to admin a community shell server when I was 15 years old. That photo was used to target me for years on hacker socials. I laughed it off because I don't really see it as a big deal, but it's definitely illegal to possess, and it's disgusting to harass somebody with this kind of content. And here's where shit starts going a little tits up. I'm not a legal expert, but I'm pretty sure Jackie just admitted to producing and distributing child pornography with her friend. I don't think it matters if it's of yourself in most states. And what I do know is it could, at least at the time she is speaking about, land you on a sex offender registry for the rest of your natural life, as happened to this kid on a pretty depressing episode of Penn and Teller's Bullshit. Now, last time I talked about Jackie on the very controversial gaming stream, Extreme Gaming with Turk February, I mentioned that with her, every accusation is an admission. This applies to the GNAA thing we just talked about, and it applied to the topic of SAP, which is coming up next. So a quick refresher from the horse's ass, what is SAP? So now that you've stepped into the victim's shoes and now a little bit know a little bit more about how I got into this, Let's talk about the big picture for today in three pieces. Right. Um, and actually, before I talk about the three pieces, this is a, this is a terminology that I coined. And I based it off of um, a, a term that is used to describe legal actions, uh, harassment actions that are taken against uh, journalists in particular. 
right? Those are called slap cases, strategic legal attacks against public participation, because the goal is to stop journalists from writing about uh, particular issues. And so with this uh, um, terminology that I've coined here, what I'm trying to convey is the goal of some people in the way that they attack you is to get you to stop talking about things, to get you to stop participating in public life. Now, I had lined up examples of Jackie and Pat conspiring sap attacks on their critics for this video, but I don't need them because literally as I was writing this, Jackie Singh doxed a younger elementary school aged Filipino girl at Josiah Munoz's child's gender reveal party to attempt to intimidate him into silence while he was criticizing her, cementing the fact that she is a complete shitbag troll. She is the troll she is describing, and she hasn't changed a bit from her misspent youth. You see, Jackie, it's probably doing things like this in the heat of the moment that made your ex take away your daughter. Looks like you can take the fat lady out of the criminal, racist, gay-hating hacking group but you can't take the criminal, racist, gay-hating hacking group out of the fat lady. I couldn't have planned for a better example. Jackie can't go a day without doing something grossly horrific, immoral, and fucked up levels of dangerous. Those trolls she claims are so evil would never dream of doing something like this. It is just insane. And here's a graph showing what the SWAT attacks look like per month, just kind of a very basic uh, data chart that gives you a sense of um, what started happening here. When I got involved, I was involved in what month? Can you guess? This is the month that the attackers were the angriest. I became involved in April. And um, this caused a spike in the attacks and then a sharp drop off as the attackers started to realize that I was bringing more heat than they were truly interested in. But it shouldn't take somebody like me um, shouting every day for six months to produce some type of a change in this person's situation. Jackie loves this. She's even taking credit for the swattings in a roundabout way. Fucking home run. Now, as we saw before, there's considerable evidence that Pat actually orders these swattings on himself. I'm not 100% sure in either direction. But if it is self-harm, maybe Pat would do it more often when there is attention on him. If it's not self-harm, if somebody else is doing it, it wouldn't have gone up as Jackie showed up. It would have gone up before and after she left. No one runs a stop sign when a cop car is behind them. J just think rationally here. In fact, if it was the forum and it was because of you, why weren't you swatted? How many swattings did you get? You said they had your personal information. Come on, use your, use your thinky thoughts here, Jackie. Finally, we swing around to the troll triad as she begins to describe the people she interacted with during her short spurg out on ONA forums. For example, the troll triad here perfectly describes the three individuals who I found to be operating at the top of the pyramid, so to speak. Uh, the people who are most engaged in the harassment cult that drive its culture and behaviors and manage the operations, they manage the systems that keep the thing up and running. And um, the, the engagement here is in character, defamation, slander, and libel. This is just like updated technology uh, focused groups of people who are disturbed who somehow form this troll triad, which makes them extremely effective in what they do. This individual is the admin of the forum. I gotta say, when I found this uh, framework, I was completely blown away because after spending so much time being attacked by these people and learning about them and studying them, I was mind blown to see something that described them in such clarity. Um, this person is the architect, this person is the legitimacy front, this would, of course, be quasi. Uh, and, and this describes them to a T. They do not display anger or rage in public settings. They try to keep themselves really controlled. There is a provocateur. This individual is running YouTube infrastructure, right? He's like a podcaster. He wants to be a content creator, but he's actually a propagandist, a disinformation producer. And his goal is to motivate other people. 
to engage in the harassment, to produce content that allows them to stick. With great reverence and respect, she's talking about nice podcast stupids Dan Mullen. This person loves unverified claims. It's just anything they can say. And because they are a relatively charming type of psychopath who is gainfully employed, um, you know, looks like a normal person by day, they fool a large number of people. They, there's, a, there's a type of legitimacy that they create by using their real name and face and going onto YouTube and saying, look at this guy, Patrick, you know, and, and this guy has published 60 videos, right? This is an entire cottage industry for him, um, regardless of whether he makes money on it or not. In fact, I think it actually drains his wallet. He spends a lot of money to fly across the country to harass, to obtain private data, um, all that kind of stuff. And then we have the crier. <coughs> The crier, um, this person is uh, another disinfo actor. You know, really these three all just all work together in order to lie. And it's incredible how pernicious lies have become in the world, isn't it? And finally, she closes out with a boomia. The, the first of these individuals Patrick S. Tomlinson lost a civil case to, and the latter two she claims to be filing a case against with the FBI for... Uh, wire fraud and at this point of time there is no reason not to believe that she's doing it just not that she has a case now the hyper focus on daniel mullen speaking of him with far more reverence than she gives pat may seem weird and at times on twitter in their exchanges there appears to be a somewhat creepy ass stepmom porno sexual tension but i don't think that's what it is i think what it actually is is a weird kind of narcissism. Jackie knows she currently operates in a troll triad herself. Jim Stewartson as the Cerebral. And if you don't know this name, I won't get into who he is. Um, him and his posse are going to need their own series, and it's in the works. Pat Tomlinson is the crier, and Jackie, Jackie the Provocateur. By speaking with a thinly veiled reverence for Dan Mullen and his work, she is actually giving herself a shout out without admitting anything openly, flattering the importance of her position. As Jackie started her presentation with a visualization exercise full of half truths and out of context anecdotes, to close this video, piece together from what information I could find, let's go through a visualization exercise too. You don't need to close your eyes for this one either. I want you to imagine you're a little girl growing up in New York City. You suffer from a functional form of autism. You can't connect with others, so you read. The other kids play together, make friends, they fight, but you don't understand any of it. You see their faces, but you can't read them. One day you discover a collective of people on IRC that are different from the rest. They are mean, they are dangerous, they don't play pretend with their feelings. You try to grow into the community, this GNAA that you discovered, and at first, sure, they bully you, like some of the kids in the real world do, but they're just some text on a screen. You join them in their activities, trolling those who are different, uh, publishing sensitive information from corporations and the government and even just people you don't like. Seeing the world clearly for what it is behind those faces you can't read, behind closed doors, behind the screens, you drop out of high school because you're learning more outside of it than in it. Life moves ahead. You join the army. You fail. You have kids. And the GNAA doesn't recognize you anymore, nor do you them. As you struggle to keep the lights on and food on the table, you begin to use your lived experiences to write a blog authoritatively, though without formal education, on the subject of cybersecurity. You want to tell your story, to prove your worth, but you can't. You can't turn coat on the GNAA. Who knows what victims of yours will come forward? And the loyalty, the mentorship of the weaves in your youth? They never turned on you. Even when you worked for Biden, they never talked to the press about what kind of person you really are. Finally, you can't be seen to be profiteering off your past crimes. Why, that would be just victimizing the victims once again and you can't be the bad guy not anymore not while you have this grift on the go then one day 
you stumble on the story of Pat Tomlinson and his five-year battle with the ONA forums. Finally, your eyes light up. You have finally found an opportunity to tell the truth. Using Dan Mullen as a stand-in for yourself and the ONA forums as a stand-in for GNAA, you can finally tell how you did the things you did, why you did the things you did. You can finally show your expertise without admitting to any wrongdoing whatsoever. It's your story, you're the villain, but no one knows, because it's Dan, not you. You use Patrick's social media to plug your lectures, your articles, you know he's a moron, an ideal troll magnet, but you play nice, he's a useful idiot, a minor character in your autobiography. You need him for now, you need his paranoid supporters for an audience, you need his story for content, you need his enemies for evidence, and to deflect that it's all about you. It's a good con, Jackie. I didn't really know where to fit this into the video, so here it is. I am sure anyone watching this who has been on the internet for more than a couple of months is familiar with Christine Chandler, the most documented and most trolled person on the internet. Many of you will also be familiar with the Idea Guy, a person who intentionally fed into Chris's delusions and slowly altered them, turning a lonely, awkward, massively bullied autistic man into a criminal and frankly unsettling woman. Jackie is doing to Patrick S. Tomlinson what Idea Guy did to Chris Chan, feeding him what he wants to hear, mixed with what she wants him to talk about, whether by design or not, she may be the most harmful of the patrols and the most opportunistic, as she is making a name off of it. In the one in a million shot you ever see this, Jackie, you're doing far more harm than good, if good is what you want to do. If harm is what you want to do, when he collapses, I'll be here to document all of your sins.